Guess what day it is? It's Sunday and time to worship! When night is falling, when fear is calming, still you're calling me. Yeah, when faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. When my mind says I'm
Stay steadfast, my soul. He's in the waiting. He's in the waiting. And hold on to your hope as your triumph unfolds. He's never failing. He's never failing. we get into our lesson. Dear God, we thank you so much for these kids. I pray that you will open our hearts to listen and hear and obey what you are trying to speak to us uh, through this lesson today. God, be with those kids and their, um, and their entire household. God, um, be with the leaders, give them wisdom. Uh, we just thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Not expect to see you here right now. This is, I'm doing great. I'm doing, how are you? Is that something new with your hair? I like that. That's very fashionable. That's in right now, isn't it? Yeah, I don't have a chicken behind my back. What? <sighs> no. Uh. <laughs> that one even me close to the weirdest thing I see this week. We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. My 
name's Harper, and this is the time we learned what's true when we're stuck in the middle. Hey Connect HQ, Fiona here, and this is Walt. Tell him what you were telling me. I have two best friends at school. Their names are Violet and Tyler. Usually we get along great. All three of us really like singing in the choir. But last week we had solo auditions and Violet got the solo that Tyler said he really wanted. So now Tyler's mad at Violet and said some kind of mean things about her. So she said some mean things about him. And they both expect me to pick a side, but they're both my best friends. What am I supposed to do? What do you think, Connect HQ? Can you help Walt figure out this problem? Well, hey, Harper. Hey, Alyssa. How's the remodel going at your grandparents' place? It's going great. By the time I'm done, it'll be about 75% less creepy. What's going on at HQ? I just got this field office call, and I'm not sure where to start. Well, tell me about the problem. This kid, his name is Walt. His best friends are fighting and they want him to pick a side. I know how it feels to be stuck in the middle like that. That's how it felt when my parents were fighting before their divorce. I felt the same way when my parents got their divorce. I had no idea how to handle that situation. I know, situations like these are so tough. I was so young then and I don't know how to use it to help well, Walt now. Didn't you go through something similar with Rodney and Vanessa? Remember there was the ping pong and the go fish? It was a big deal. Oh my goodness. I almost forgot about that. So much has happened since then. Well, why don't you try talking with Vanessa and Rodney about what all three of you learned? Maybe you'll figure out a way to help Walt in the process. I like that plan. Thanks, Alyssa. No problem. I'm... That didn't sound good. I better go. Gonna be the best exposure. Are you guys finally gonna tell me what you've been working on? So you know how Chevelaine really likes chickens? Yes. And you know how nobody here has ever been able to figure out when her birthday is? Yes. We figured out when her birthday is. And we're making the teeniest birthday surprise video. No big deal. Oh, but no telling anyone else. You have my word. And I was wondering if you two could help me with a field office call? Yeah. Sure, what's the problem? Remember your fight over the mountains of Wiltshire last year? Uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, mm. Well, Vanessa, are you ready? I think that's a question you should be asking yourself. Well, Rodney, are you ready? Yes, yes I am, Vanessa. You know what? Not as ready as I am. Ahem. Three games, that's the plan. Ping pong, go fish, and checkers. If Rodney's team wins two out of three, he will be declared creator of the best game ever, the mountains, of Wiltshire. And if Vanessa's team wins, which we will, she'll be declared the creator. Let the tournament begin. Yeah, I don't think Rodney and I will be forgetting that fight anytime soon. Good, because I think we can use that fight to help a kid who's stuck between his two friends who are arguing. Well, I know Vanessa and I didn't like fighting with each other, how did it make you feel when we asked you to pick a side? Terrible. All I wanted to do was support you both, but it felt like there was no way to do that. In the end, I knew one of you would be upset. Well, when you're in that situation, not picking sides is the right thing to do. Don't participate in hate. Don't participate in hate. That's a good point. And there are some other don'ts that we learned. Like, you don't need to know all the details about who did what to whom. Or you don't need to hide. Or pretend like nothing's wrong. And you don't just need to go with whatever sounds best to you. This reminds me of a certain King Rehoboam that we read about in the Bible. Here, check this out. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God and love others. We're searching God's word for things to discover. This book 
is alive. First kings. After King Solomon died, his son Rehoboam became king. Yay! I'm the king now. The people sent a leader to the new king to speak up for them. So, how's everything going? Not so good. Listen, we've worked hard for your father. He made us pay lots of taxes and forced us to work building his palaces. Please give us some rest, and we'll be willing to serve you. Hmm. I'll tell you what. Give me three days to think it over, then come back. King Rehoboam decided to talk it over with the same men who gave his father, King Solomon, wise advice. So what should I do? How do you think I should answer the people? If you will be a servant to the people, have compassion, and work things out with them, they'll end up doing anything for you. Yes, Your Majesty. That would be the wise thing to do. Hey, I'm not sure you guys are right. After all, you guys are old. What do you guys think? Should I lighten up on the people? Now tell me what you really think. After all, we have grown up together. Uh, forget about what those old geezers told you. Yeah, the people are just being a bunch of whiners. Hey, I know what you should tell them. Tell them my little finger is thicker than my father's waist. If you think my dad worked you hard, you haven't seen the half of it. Yeah, and then you should say, my dad hit you with whips, but I'll beat you up with chains. That'll show them who's king. You guys are right. Those old guys don't even know what they're talking about. Three days later, Jeroboam and the people showed up to hear what King Rehoboam had to say. Hey, if you think my dad worked you hard, you haven't seen half of it. My dad hit you with whips, but I'll beat you up with chains. What do you think about that? Get lost, King Rehoboam. We've had it with you. Go ahead. Go. What do I care? Because King Rehoboam didn't listen to the wise advice of his leaders, the kingdom of Israel was split in half. Instead of ruling over all of Israel, as his father Solomon did, King Rehoboam only ruled over the towns of Judah. The rest of the tribes went with Jeroboam, and he ruled over them. When King Rehoboam needed help, he could have followed the advice of the wise people around him. Instead, he chose to listen to his friends and followed their advice. That only made the people hate him even more than they did before. His friend's advice made a bad situation even worse. That's why it's so important for us to go to trusted adults when we feel like we're stuck in the middle. They can help us figure out what to do next. Which is exactly how Kat helped me during your fight. Is everything okay? The Goldfish Tournament is up next. Prepare yourself, Resolute Badgers. No, please. Badgers can't play Go Fish. Oh, and you think grasshoppers can? I'll take that as a no. Usually we get along so well around here, but everyone's fighting and I don't know what to do. Is there anything I can do to help? You would help me? We just met. I'll let you in on a secret. I love fixing things. Figuring out what's wrong and how I can help best. And I think I can help you, if you want it. I would really appreciate that. This whole thing reminds me of how my parents used to fight before their divorce. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how to talk to them then, and I don't know how to talk to my friends now. No matter who's fighting around you, you can find peace with God. With His peace, it will be easier for you to talk to others calmly about your feelings. And if you need help when your family or friends are fighting, you can always ask a trusted adult for help. Like you? Like me. Thanks, Kat. This really did help me. I don't know what I would have done without Kat during that fight. I don't know what we would have done either. She showed all of you what to do when your friends and family are fighting. Like figuring out how you feel about a situation. And trusting God. And asking God for empathy. Empathy means understanding how others feel about a situation. When we put ourselves in someone else's shoes, it makes it easier to share God's love with them. That reminds me of a verse about this idea. Do you want me to teach it to you? Definitely. It's from the book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 12. It goes like this. Proverbs 10, 12. Proverbs 10, 12. Hate stirs up fights. Hate stirs up fights. But love erases all sins by forgiving them. But love erases all sins by forgiving them. If your friends and family are fighting, the best thing you can do is encourage them to love, forgive, and move on together. 
Finding the courage to do that isn't always easy. It took us a while to be brave enough to talk to the two of you. But we're both so glad you did. Go fish. Rodney, Vanessa, that's enough. No way, Harper. I'm about to win. Whatever. I'm about to win. No, seriously, you guys need to stop this. We love you both, really. And we know you love each other, too. You guys just need to talk this out, instead of doing all of this. Vanessa and I were only able to work through our problems because you and everybody else decided to show us God's love instead of picking sides. When your fight first started, I didn't think a happy ending was possible. But God had everything under control. I just had to trust Him and do what I knew He wanted me to do. That's exactly right. And even when fights don't have a happy ending, we can still trust that God is in control. He's always watching over us and caring for us. So what do you think? Do you feel like you're ready to make that connection transmission for Walt? Yeah, I'm ready. La 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 la. Great job. La 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 la. La 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 la. Walt, look, look, we got a message from Connect HQ. Hey Walt, my name is Harper, and I'm part of Connect HQ. I learned a great verse that I'd like to share with you. It goes like this: Proverbs 10:12. Hate stirs up fights, but love erases all sins by forgiving them. If your friends are fighting, don't give in to the hate. Instead, encourage them to love, forgive, and move on together. It's also important to go to trusted adults when you're stuck in the middle and don't know what to do next. When King Rehoboam had a fight with his people, he could have listened to the wise people around him. But instead, he listened to his friends, and their advice just made things worse. Keep in mind the do's and don'ts when people around you are fighting. Don't spend all your time trying to figure out what went wrong. Hide from everyone or pretend like nothing's wrong. Do ask God to give you empathy so you can share His love and forgiveness. Do figure out how you feel about the situation. Do trust that God is still in control, no matter what. It's never easy if your friends or family are fighting, but you don't have to stay stuck in the middle. Don't participate in hate and keep doing what God wants you to do. Even if the fight doesn't end, God can help the people who are hurting. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. Wow. I didn't think that would work. This will definitely help me love my friends. Thank you so much, Connect HQ. You ready for this? Ready as I'll ever be. Okay, wait for it, wait for it. We pan in, and boom! She's gonna love it! <laughs> oh, I'm watching again! I mean... Uh-uh, mm -mm. no. Mm -mm. You see, the chickens are a metaphor. So this was inspired by that French film? Fade to black and white. So what do you think Chef Elaine's gonna think of her birthday present when we give it to her? I think there's a 50% chance she'll love it. Mm -hmm. And a 50% chance she chases us out of Connect HQ with a spatula. If you're stuck in the middle because your friends and family are fighting, it can feel pretty lonely, but you're not alone. Jesus is here for you and wants to help you. If you've never made the decision to follow Jesus with your whole life, you can make that choice today. All you have to do is remember your ABCs. A, admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying Him. B, believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C, choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live in love like Jesus, tell others God is your leader and number one friend. Did you make that choice today? If you did, make sure to talk about it with a parent or leader you trust. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to the YouTube at iheartkids.wv. See you later, alligator. Peace out, Girl Scout. Later, Mater. Deuces, all y'all mooses. Bye! Bye.